Hello friends! We are here in my backyard again for another virtual library lesson. Uh, we can't be together in the Korea library, but I am so grateful that we can still be together through these videos and we can still share stories and lessons together um, from home. I hope everyone's doing really well. I hope that you are settling into a different routine than what you're used to, but I hope that you are spending time with your family, doing a lot of reading and growing your brain. We are still continuing our Women's History Month picture book biographies, and today we have a book about one of my favorite artists of all time. Her name was Frida Kahlo. She is no longer with us, but her art has lived on, and it is she's one of the most influential artists in history. She's from Mexico, and she is a very important part of Mexican culture, but she has spread all around the world. People everywhere know Frida Kahlo and love her work. One of the things that she was well known for was how much she loved animals. So this story about her life is called Frida Kahlo and her animalitos. Animalitos is Spanish for like little animals, little pets. There is an English and a Spanish version of this book. Um, we have the Spanish version in our library as well. So if you read in Spanish, when we get back into our normal routine, you can come and check out either the English or the Spanish version of this book. Today, we're going to read the English version. It is by Monica Brown and illustrated by John Parra. Um, this book is a story of how Frida got through some difficult times in her life. To me, Frida Kahlo is a perfect example of having purpose. We talked about purpose as our character trait for this month. Frida, even though she had some really horrible, tragic things happen to her, she never lost sight of her purpose in life as being an artist. She did amazing things with a paintbrush and a canvas, and she did it all with little animals beside her. So we're going to read our story, Frida Kahlo and her animalitos, and then we'll talk a little bit more about Frida's life. So here we go. Our title page. This is the story of a little girl named Frida who grew up to be one of the most famous painters of all time. Frida was special. This is also the story of two monkeys, a parrot, three dogs, two turkeys, an eagle, a black cat, and a fawn. They were Frida's pets, and they were special too. Frida had a parrot named Bonito. That means pretty in Spanish or handsome. Like her parrot, Frida was colorful. She liked to wear bold shades that celebrated indigenous Mexico and her own heritage. She lived in a house the color of a parrot's bright blue feathers, La Casa Azul, where she grew up with her mom, dad, and sisters. Frida had a pet fawn named Granizo. Like her fawn, Frida had watchful, beautiful eyes. When Frida closed her eyes, she remembered her life as a little girl. Frida was always with her father, a photographer, who taught her to look at the world through curious eyes. Frida and her father would walk to the park to collect bugs to look at under a microscope. Frida's father also taught her how to paint finishing touches on his photographs. Frida loved the small brushes and the beautiful colors. Back then, we didn't have computer programs like Photoshop, so professional photographers like Frida's father would use paint and tiny little paint brushes to touch up the photos that they took with film. So he, Frida would help her father, and that was kind of her first exposure to art. Frida had a cat with black, shiny fur, the same color as her long, dark hair. Like a cat, Frida was playful. But as a child, Frida couldn't always play. When Frida was six, she got very sick. She was in bed for a long time. But little Frida didn't get sad or bored. Instead, she used her breath to make mist on her window, and then she drew a door with her finger. Frida used her big imagination and curious eyes to walk out the door with a magic friend a little girl who danced and played like a kitten. 
Frida was independent like a cat. Frida's sickness left one of her legs different from the other, and sometimes children made fun of her. But this didn't stop Frida from skating and riding bikes and rowing on the lakes of Chapultepec Park so that her leg would get stronger. Frida was not afraid to do things other little girls didn't usually do. She wore overalls and boxed and wrestled. Frida had two spider monkeys, Fuleng Chang and Caimito de Guay Guay Guayabal. Sorry for my Spanish, I try my best. Like her monkeys, Frida could be mischievous, even when she was a teenager. When Frida was 15, she went to a school called the Preparatoria and found a group of friends she loved. Like Frida, her friends were curious to learn all they could. Together, they read and studied and argued and sometimes got in trouble. Wearing matching caps, they rode donkeys through the hallways of the Preparatoria and set off firecrackers. Oh my goodness. That's a good example that this took place a long time ago. I do not think anybody should be riding donkeys and setting off fireworks through the halls of Carrillo, no matter how excited we will be when we get to go back. Frida had an eagle named Gertrudis. Like her eagle, Frida's imagination could fly high. When Frida was 18, she was in a terrible accident. And once again, she had to be in bed for many months. This time, Frida didn't create a magic imaginary friend. She created art. Frida's mother made her a special easel and hung a mirror over her canopy bed so Frida could paint. Frida used her imagination and curious eyes to do just that. Feet, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? That's a quote from Frida right there. Feet, what do I need you for when I have wings to fly? And as if those weren't enough pets, Frida had two turkeys and three dogs, Senor Xolotl, Senorita Capulina, and Senora Costi. Frida's turkeys were intelligent and sensitive, just like herself. And like Frida, her dogs were warm and loving. When she was lonely or sad, she would wrap her arms around them and they would comfort her. Her Sholo dogs were the same breed that ran and hunted with the Aztec people thousands of years ago, and they were a reflection of Frida's heritage, of which she was very proud. Frida's dogs had no hair, but their bodies were warm, and Frida gave them great big hugs whenever she felt lonely or sad. Some of you may recognize that breed of dog from the movie Coco. That was the dog in that movie too. Frida's animalitos were spirited and entertaining, just like Frida. When her two spider monkeys were being good, Frida would hold them like little babies. When they were being mischievous, they would steal socks and fruit and leap out the window so that nobody could catch them. Her parrot named Bonito liked to snuggle under the covers while Frida took naps, and he would do tricks at the dinner table for pats of butter. Frida's animalitos played all day in the courtyard at La Casa Azul, the bright blue house on Londres Street. Her husband, Diego Rivera, even made the animals a pyramid to climb on so that her pets could roam freely. Look at that. I don't know about you, I would love a pyramid in my backyard with all kinds of animals climbing all over it. When Frida painted, her pets would keep her company. And Frida painted all the time while the birds sang, the dogs barked, and the turkeys danced in the garden. Frida's animals were her children, her friends, and her inspiration. Frida painted when she was sick and hurting, and Frida painted when she was happy. She also painted when Diego was gone and she was sad. But Frida was never really alone at La Casa Azul the bright blue house on Londres Street. She had her animalitos and herself, and she painted both. Frida painted herself with her monkeys playing with ribbons. She painted herself with Bonito the parrot and Senor Zolotl the dog. She painted her black cat too, peeking over her shoulder. 
Frida painted herself with all the pets she loved so much, even butterflies and caterpillars. Her paintings were magic. And today, if you visit La Casa Azul in Cayoacan, just outside of Mexico City, you might hear the sound of a bird or see a black cat jump from the pyramid that sits in the courtyard of the bright blue house on Londres Street, where Frida and her animalitos lived so many years ago. You can still visit La Casa Azul, Frida's house. It's like a museum today. You can still visit it if you go to Mexico City. There's an author's note explaining more about the story. And then here is Frida. Right here, there's also a list of all of the paintings that Frida made that have her pets in it. So if you click down below, I'm gonna link a Google Slides where I'm gonna have copies of all of those paintings, um, the ones that Frida did with her animals in them. So you can scroll through those, um, look at those actual paintings that she made, see her animals. I'm also gonna include some photographs of her with her animals. Uh, Frida is very inspirational to me as somebody who had purpose and grit and no matter how many bad things happened in her life, how many tragedies happened to her, she had purpose. She kept going with what she was most passionate about. And I think the fact that she did some amazing art when she, after she had her horrible accident, um, she was in a bus crash and she broke most of the bones in her body. It was a really horrible, horrible accident. She had many, many surgeries and had to stay in bed in her house for a long time. So it's something that maybe we can relate to a tiny bit. We're lucky that we weren't in a horrible accident, but we do have to stay at home for a little while. Um, so maybe we can relate a little bit and realize that this can be an opportunity to get really creative, to embrace the things that we are the most passionate about, to keep learning, to have time to explore new things, kind of the same way that Frida did. It was when she was super creative and did a lot of her art. Um, there's also going to be a link in the description to a biography page about Frida if you want to read more about her, and also a link to a coloring sheet if you feel inspired and artistic and you want to do some coloring. So I will see you guys next week for our next library lesson. Take care, keep reading, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!